Hello, my name is Ian Thompson. I serve as a senior director for the Choctaw Nation Wheelock Academy Historic Site, the Tashkahoma Capitol Museum, and the Historic Preservation Department. And through this, I get to work with a, a wonderful staff and community members to try to protect and preserve our history and our sacred sites and our historic sites. As far as we know, the, the Choctaw ancestors have always worn some type of footwear. And that's a little bit of a difficult question because much of what we learn about them comes from archaeology. You know, the things that they left behind that become a part of the archaeological record in the ground. When you think about it, the things that shoes are usually made from are biodegradable. So that early time period, most of the time, we don't have a lot of biodegradable material left in the archaeological record to see. So you look at places <clears throat> where there's good preservation, like caves, for example. Um, there are some really early surviving pieces of footwear from caves in the Arkansas and Missouri Ozarks. The best that we can tell from that, until about a, a thousand years ago or so, the Choctaw ancestors and probably the ancestors of people living in a wide swath of the eastern part of the United States, made their footwear out of plant fibers. Things like rattlesnake master, stinging nettle. These plants have vascular tissues in them and our ancestors and the ancestors of other, tri other tribal people knew how to process those to get nice soft fibers, um, spin those into yarn, and then use the yarn to make textiles and twine it into shoes and that type of thing. If you think about a, a knitted house shoe, that's kind of similar to the best we can tell what our ancestors and the ancestors of other tribal people in the eastern United States used to wear up until about a thousand years ago. And then for whatever reason, they started to make sandals and simple shoes out of leather. Um, we have images from maybe 800 years ago that seem to show pucker toe moccasins. And pucker toe moccasins are, are the type of footwear the Choctaws were wearing when Europeans came. There are two different main styles. This is one style here. <clears throat> These were worn by Choctaw ladies. The, by pucker toe, I'm talking about this part of the shoe right here. There are two different types of stitches you can do at least that cause these puckers or these creases on the toe. But basically that's designed to take a flat piece of leather and make it wrap around your foot in a comfortable way. The Choctaw puckers are, are very tight on the moccasins. Um, these are Choctaw ladies moccasins. They're designed to come halfway up the calf and that's to protect them from thorns and things like that. These were worn traditionally with a, a leather or textile skirt known as an afkona in the Choctaw language, and that came down to about the knees. So together, these pretty well protected their legs. Choctaw men's moccasins are the same down low, but they don't have this upper part. It just cuts off about here, and this folds down. And that's because Choctaw men didn't need high top moccasins because we wore leggings, so that protected our legs. Today, we think about moccasins kind of like shoes. Um, shoes are something that in modern American society we wear every single day. Most of our waking time is spent wearing shoes. But for the ancestors, the Choctaw ancestors, it, it was a little bit different. They wore them more like we wear gloves today. They wore them during cold weather. They wore them if they were going through thorny or difficult terrain. But other than that, they usually went barefoot. So you think about it more as a, a protective thing, but when they had the opportunity, they usually just went barefoot. Mm -hmm.